If you play the animation, you can see that the basketball moves at a constant speed. The interpolation between these two keyframes is linear. Clicking on the position parameter will select all of the keyframes on the line. Now there's a frame surrounding the keyframes, and you can click on the middle point to move this set of keyframes from left to right. The handles on the left and right allow you to compress or extend the animation. Let's go back using the undo commands, but keep these keys selected. The timeline has several different modules represented by these buttons at the top right. Right now we're in the dope sheet, but we can switch to the curve editor. Since the parameter and its keyframes are selected, the curve editor automatically focuses on these keyframes. The red curve represents the evolution of the x value. Since it doesn't change, it's a straight horizontal line. The green curve represents the basketball's y value which is linear and moves vertically from the first keyframe to the second keyframe, from 650 to negative 400. If you select a keyframe, you can see its tangents. We'll go over how to specifically adjust these tangents in a more advanced tutorial. Let's undo the changes and restore the tangent to its original position. Just like in the dope sheet, you can select and move keyframes in the curve editor. Both the spacebar and the middle mouse button allow you to navigate in the curve editor. Clicking on the button at the top right will recenter the view in the curve editor on the selected keyframes or on all existing keyframes. Just like in the viewer, you can enable this function using the F key. Take some time to get familiar with this process by moving and recentering the view on the selected keyframes. Selecting keyframes in the curve editor provides access to different interpolation types on the right. The interpolation types listed under the various ease in and out sections are a little particular as they define the interpolation between the current keyframe and the next keyframe without taking into account the tangents of the next one. The keyframe icon representing a square-shaped arrow pointing right tells us that this keyframe will span the entire animation with this interpolation type until the next keyframe. Selecting the bounce interpolation type from the ease out section doesn't change the two keyframe values. It'll only change the interpolation from one keyframe to the other. If we go back to the dope sheet, you'll see that the keyframe icon has been modified. With it selected, there is a button on the right where you can access all of the interpolation types without having to go through the curve editor. While keeping the key selected, you can play the animation based on the work area to interactively change the interpolation type during playback. For example, the quadratic interpolation type in the ease in section will gradually slow down the basketball as it approaches the ground. Note that the quadratic interpolation type also exists in the ease out section, where it will accelerate the basketball speed before it suddenly stops when it touches the ground. Let's go back to bounce in the ease out section to make the basketball bounce on the ground. In this video, we went over how to focus the timeline on selected keyframes, switch from the dope sheet to the curve editor, and change keyframe interpolation types.